let me now briefly summarize what we did during previous few lectures. First, we have used apt get utility in order to install missing htop package. This package is missing in this Ubuntu image that we are running using Docker. We have actually used apt get before in order to install other package called mandb in order to get man pages working in Linux computer. I have also shown you how to run htop utility and how to get information about currently running processes. You could also perform other actions with those processes like kill processes and filter them if you want. Also using htop utility you could observe how much CPU and memory are currently used by all running processes. And I see that CPU consumption is around 2% and memory consumption is around 300 MB. Also I see here limit 2.92 GB. And actually it is a limit of Docker host. I could go to Docker settings and quickly demonstrate to it. Go to dashboard, click on settings icon, go to resources and here is this memory limit 3 GB. And here is also swap size 1 GB and you actually see this limit here in this table as well. It means that this Docker container is able to utilize up to 3 GB of RAM and up to 1 GB of swap size. Great, but the main idea why I wanted to show you this htop utility is that it actually shows out of the box command that was used for start of corresponding process. Actually, you could use additional option along with ps command. Let me show you that quickly. ps-f and with this option you could also see command that was used for start of corresponding process. For example, I have just entered the ps-f command, that's why here in this list I see ps along with dash f option. Great, that's how you could use ps top and htop utility. Now let me do for you a quick demo and run htop utility on another Ubuntu computer that has much more processes than this container. Let me switch there and enter htop here, it is available here out of the box and here is a long list of different processes. And you may see that some of processes were started by root user and some by Bogdan user. Actually, you could run htop utility along with option that will filter processes by user. Let me quickly show you that htop dash dash help. And here you'll see this option dash u, it is short version of this option or long version is dash dash user. And if you use this option, you need to supply mandatory argument for this option. Recap that we have talked about arguments for options before. And for example, if I want to list only my processes, I could use this option htop-u. And if I use short version of option, I need to supply argument for option after space, like so, dash u space and type my name. And now I see only my processes here in this table. Let me exit from here and let's list all processes that were started by root user. And let me use long version of this option dash dash user and in such case I need to use here equal sign and type name of the user root like so. Press enter and now I see processes that were started only by root user. All right, let me exit from here and let me start htop without any additional options like this and let me show you how you could perform for example filtering of processes. For that you could press F4 and let's filter for example by bash. And now I'll find bash process that was started by Bogdan user. Also let's filter for example by jnom like so. And now I'll see all processes that have jnom somewhere in process name. Alright, that's how you could filter processes. Now let me demonstrate you how to sort processes. For that you could use F6, let me press it. And here in the left section you could sort for example by percent memory. And now I see that all processes were sorted by percentage of memory usage. And here is the process that utilizes around 6% of memory. It is actually this graphical user interface desktop I am currently working in, Nautilus desktop. Ok, also you see limits of this computer and now 1GB of RAM is utilized and maximum size is 2GB. 
And actually, I am running this Ubuntu computer as a virtual machine using VMware Fusion, and I have set a limit of 2 GB of RAM for this computer. That's why here I see this limit, 2 GB. All right, that's all for this demonstration, and please note that if you don't have separate Ubuntu computer, no worries. You are still good to go just with Linux container running using Docker. That's all for those lectures about processes. I hope you enjoyed them. And next, let me talk about standard in, standard out, and standard error of every process. You'll understand those three different data flows of every process, and you'll understand how to use them. I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Bye-bye.